Hi, it's Todd with Kudis Industries. Today I got a Victor CSR 450 regulator on my oxygen bottle that won't regulate pressure anymore, so I'll show you how to rebuild it. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thanks for watching. So here's what the regulator is doing. This is backed all the way out, okay? And I'll just crack the bottle. You'll see this is tank pressure and this is uh, gauge pressure to the torch. And with this backed all the way out, just cracking the bottle, you see it goes all the way up to you know it's right now it's at 140 p 160 psi so it'll keep going so anyways regulators broke i'll show you how to rebuild it so i want to clamp this regulator in the vise to take it apart but i can't clamp it the way i like to with these gauges on so the first thing i'll do is I'll just uh, set the, the regulator up like you see it here in the vise with the shop rag and take both of the gauges off that was the high pressure gauge and then the low pressures on the opposite side and I use a dental pick throughout the video. It's pretty good for cleaning out these threads uh, and replacing the seals. And you can get this at, at Harbor Freight, really, or any tool store. You can get some dental pick set. So both, both gauges come off. I'll clean the threads, both external and internal. And then I'll retape the uh, gauges with four to five wraps of Teflon tape, which is pretty standard for me. And we'll, we'll see that put back together at the end of the video after it's rebuilt. Okay, now that I have both of the gauges off, it allows me to clamp deeper on the regulator body in the vise, and I'm not clamping very hard here, just, just enough so it doesn't spin whenever I unscrew the top cap. And uh, remember, it's all brass, so you, you don't wanna go crazy with the vise. Just, just clamp it on that body, get a good grip on it so it doesn't spin. And I take out the adjustment knob just because it gets in the way. And this is an adjustable wrench, 18 inch adjustable. Some guys use channel locks. You know, I prefer the, the wrench, it fits under nicely, doesn't distort it. And it doesn't take a whole lot of force to break this free. I was actually kind of surprised how little force it took. So, so the top cap's off. Here's the inside, that's you look at the spring and the top of the diaphragm. So I'll take all these parts out. So there's the adjustment knob cup, there's the spring for it, and the diaphragm assembly comes out next. That just pulls right off. And then we get into the actual valve itself. So here's uh, 11 16 wrench on that nut internal to the valve. And this actually holds the, the actual internal working. So the valve seat uh, assembly comes out. So there you go. So we'll reuse that brass nut and then that uh, seat assembly with the seal gets replaced. So again, here's the dental pick, just taking out that O-ring that seals against the bottom of the diaphragm that comes right out and then I'll just clean that groove with the, the dental pick a little bit get any debris out of there and some paper towels and it's pretty straightforward if you look inside this regulator there's, there's not much to it really so it, it's pretty simple just keep it clean I have a little bit of compressed air that I usually have next to me I'll just blow all this stuff out before I put it together here's the rebuild kit I actually got this on Amazon you could do a search on Amazon for Victor 450 regular rebuild kit and it comes up. It's 35 bucks and it has everything that I needed to replace the internal parts. So, you know, O-ring seals, the internal seat valve assembly, uh, and all the, the, the new diaphragm comes with it. So you'll see here, I'm pulling out with that dental pick again. There's a little seal on the bottom. That seals the seat assembly. So put that to the side. Now, when I put the new one in, I put a little drop of Windex on that that seat seal because when you flip this upside down to thread in the, the seat, uh, that little washer gasket wants to fall out. So I didn't show in the video, but I put a usually a tiny drop of Windex right on there because the Windex washes away and it's, you know, it, it's pretty inert to the, the rest of the, the gauge. So um, I fitted the O-ring that's actually going to come back out. And here's the seat assembly. So that's the seal on the bottom that white part and then that little cup and spring we're going to reuse that so I'll put that to the side and then here's the internal seat assembly so that's the part that actually seals um, the regulator from leaking so they get a new one with the kit that goes right back in there with the existing spring and existing cup and you'll see there's a new I think it's Teflon it fits that seal right in the bottom there. So if you were to take this and try to put it in this valve the way it is, it would it would all fall apart. So you actually have to hold the seat, like I'm gonna show you here in your, in your hand with the spring, and then flip the valve body upside down. 
and this is why I put that little drop of Windex on that that clear uh, washer gasket that fits in the bottom because if you don't it'll want to fall out as you're threading this in because it's upside down so I thread it in by hand till it seats I know everything's in place there it's again upside down then I'll just take the wrench and uh, and tighten it down till it's snug again it's, it's all brass you don't have to go crazy just a, a good mechanics snug fit is good enough Okay, now that my seat assembly is tight, I'll go ahead and put that airing back in. You see that cut on my finger? I picked up a burr somewhere on there as I was tightening it down, so just be careful of burrs on this, these brass fittings. It really sliced my finger open pretty easily. Okay, so here's the diaphragm assembly. Uh, you'll see I have one black O-ring left in the kit, and I'll show you where that goes next. So we do replace the diaphragm. That spring cup comes off, just unthread it with two wrenches, and then pull that brass part out. And then you'll see there's the o-ring all right so there's that mystery o-ring they get with the kit that'll come out so again here's the pick just pull that o-ring off pretty easily and then you'll see i'll pick up the new one there's a new one and just fit it on and then put the diaphragm back together so here we go that lip goes down that's what seals around the o-ring okay there's my new o-ring on the brass part and here's the spring cup and a nut. So again, that O-ring on the brass stud really um, seals up the gases from leaking around the inside of the diaphragm. So I just put this on, snugged it up tight, two wrenches. Again, you're just, these are all brass parts, so don't have to go crazy. Just snug it tight and then put it back on. Just make sure that's very clean before you put it all back together. O-rings in the groove. For the diaphragm and fit that on there and then next thing goes the spring and the adjustment knob cup and then here's the cap the cap it threads on so again this this thread on actually pretty easy sometimes you could rotate it backwards there to get the thread started but once it does it, it threads on pretty easily and then i just take my adjustable wrench and snug it down so i think everybody could have a good feel for how tight to make this. You're not going super tight. Again, you when you took it apart, you, you felt it didn't take much to, to loosen it. So when I tighten it, you know, I just snugged it up. And then the adjustment knob goes back into place. Okay, last thing we gotta do before we test this is put our gauges back on. Now on the back of the regular HP, that's high pressure. That's the gauge that goes up to 4,000 PSI. So I already Teflon taped my gauges beforehand, and then I'll just thread them in here and, and then turn them to the front of the gauges facing forward. Uh, it's pretty snug. So by the time you thread it in there, uh, where it's just starting to get snug, you'll see the gauge, the gauge face will not be where you want it to be, so you have to turn it. And by the time you turn it forward, uh, it'll be nice and tight. And that's true I found on both of these gauges. So it gets pretty snug and then do another three quarter or a half turn, it gets it nice and tight and facing the correct direction. And that's it. Okay, so we got the regular back on the tank. This is backed off all the way. We'll crack this. All right, good. So we got pressure on the high side, nothing on the low side. So increase this. There we go. Beautiful. <clears throat> awesome. So we got regulation back. So I'll back this off. I'll open my valve on the torch. Back this off all the way. And we're back to zero. Close this torch. Pump it up again. Beautiful. Back it off. Open my torch. And 
temperature regulates the pressure. Beautiful. 